Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see the first part of the tutorial on the Anemon project. This first part will simply cover all the typeless setup for the creation of the Anemon look. And if you are interested in exporting in TypeSpline, texturing, rendering and lighting, you can find it later on Patreon as well as the complete project which is already present. Okay, let's start now. Okay, so we are here in today's Max and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a plane that will be used to generate our particles. So here my plane. I will maybe up the segment 100. And I will add a noise modifier. Fractal. Scale to maybe 50. And strength to 10, 10 and 20. I can maybe add a turbo smooth. And I think it's already good. It's a good start for the creation, maybe, of a rock mesh. Okay, so I will switch now to clay mode to see better my mesh. And now I will create a Typhlo setup. Open editor. I move the windows here. And I will add a burst operator. Zero, zero, and maybe up the total of particles with a large number. I can now add a position object, pick my plane, and we can see here all the particles created on the plane. I will maybe up the multiplier to see it better. Okay, perfect. Change the color to white. It's great, but uh, we have maybe too much particle. So I will go in position object, and I can select here separation. We can see here with a distance of 5, you have really less particle on the plane. I will maybe change the value to a value of 2. 2.5 maybe. I think it's good like this. I will now add a speed operator. Select direction in particle Z. Maybe up the magnitude. And we can see here, if I go forward in the animation, that the particle move in the Z axis. It's perfect. Maybe it's too uniform, so I will add a small uh, variation. 50. I think it's cool like this. Perfect. Okay, now what I want to do is to create more point for each point. So I will add a spoon operator. Here. And I will select by travel distance. Of course, I go in inherent properties and I set the velocity to zero because I don't want that the particle move with the velocity of the speed. And it's great like this. I can maybe change the step size, value of two. I think it will be better like that. What I want to do now is to stop the creation of the particles. So I will add a time step. Time step here. I think I will set a value of 15 because the size for this plane will be enough. I think maybe too much. Maybe 10 will be enough. If I go to the frame 10, yes. I think it's really enough for the creation of our splines. I will now add a stop operator. Hop. I duplicate the display, link the time test to the stop. And we can see here that at frame 10, particular stopped. It's perfect. Okay, so now what I want to do is to add force in this simulation. So I will add the force operator. Turbulence, set a small value, like maybe 0 0.2 for the strength. Maybe it's too strong, so I will add a slow operator. Up the velocity to 20. Great. Okay, perfect. So what I want to do now is to bind the particles to create my splines. I will now add a particle bind. 
I can, if I want, increase the stiffness, 0 0.9. We have nothing to change here in this value. Just activate, bind to sibling, and bind sibling here. And we can see here that the particle starts to create bind. To see it better, I will add a spline operator. Select particle bind and create new. I cannot activate the display because now I have my tie spline. What I want to do now is to bind the spline to the surface. So I will add a surface test, pick my plane, and I will add an object bind. I can now link the surface test to the object bind. Of course, I need to pick this and I will select lock to surface. Okay, great. It works very well. But we can see here the particle for the surface test. So I will go here in the distance and maybe decrease the value to. Okay. I can, now, of course, duplicate the spline pass in this event. What I will do now is to create a mesh for this particle, for this spline. I will go here in tie spline and activate tie spline mesh. You can see here the spline. I will go here in the menu and uh, maybe decrease a bit the value of the radius, 0.3. Go here, entice spline, and select weld binding and weld mat. And now we can see that we have a really beautiful spline. Perfect. I cannot go back, entice spline. Go maybe in curve to change the look. And play with the spline. Maybe like this. I can up a bit the radius, I think. Go back to 0 0.5. Great. And now we can see that we have a lot of particles. It's great, but uh, we can see here that we have overlapping for the um, particle and it's not great. So we will fix that later. The first thing we are going to do now is to change a bit the force. So I will add a tie force. So I will go here in tie flow and add a tie wind. Set my tie wind maybe like this. In this direction, maybe up. Add a small strength, maybe 0 0.2. And a bit turbulence, 0 0.5. I cannot go back in tie flow, in force, and I will pick my force here. Okay, that's really cool like this. We can see that the particles are affected by the force we created. I think it's great. I can go back now in tie flow. I don't want that the particle goes through the blade. So, collision. And I move the collision here. And I can now pick my plane. I have maybe too much particle and it's hard to calculate for the moment. So I will go back in position object and maybe at the distance, maybe three. Perfect. I can now go forward in the animation and we can see here the result. It's really good. Okay, so as I said previously, we have maybe some overlapping here we can see in the animation. So to fix that, it's really easy. What we'll do is to add a particle physics operator. Select enable particle collision. We have here the radius and we will maybe up a bit this radius, maybe 1.2. Okay. I can play with this value. Maybe I can up a bit the radius to see what it will do. And it's still correct. It's still correct. 
But if you start to see that the particle have a strange look, it's because this value is too high. So I think maybe this value of 1.3 will be good. Yeah, I think it's more natural like this. And now we can see we have an overlapping on the particle. It's perfect. We have great collision everywhere. Yeah. Okay, perfect. No overlapping and great collision with each other. Okay, so another cool thing to do is to add attraction between the particles, between the spline to create more natural look. So I will activate here particle attraction. And here in the strength, up the value, maybe 0 0.0.9. And if I go up, we can see that we have attraction between this line. It looks like cluster group. I can, if I want, up the radius. And you see that we have different look. We have now something more natural with attraction and repulsion. It's great. Okay, guys, it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. So here is just how I created the setup for this project. If you are interested in the complete project, you can find it on Patreon. And also, do not hesitate to subscribe and to give me a thumb up if you like what I do. See you very soon for a new tutorial, guys. Bye.